opening. It was like fun. Uh, Alright, whatever. I'm going to do something I've never done before. And that something is a pacifist run of Prince of Persia. I'm only going to kill Jafar if I can help it. It's theoretically possible, but there are some NPCs that are very difficult to not kill. And I'm probably going to have to lead them around a lot. Shit. I need to bait that guy further. There we go. I've never even heard of a pacifist run of this game, so it sounds kind of fun. It's also probably definitely going to be generously harder than just playing the game normally. It's a challenge run that I've never really thought of before, and I love challenge runs in video games. Lost Crookie. Also, my chat is not moving. Or rather, I don't think it'll move at all. I think I need to refresh this page. Alt. Tab. Um. Will that work? Probably. I'm on a time limit. I didn't notice the flash crash like message at the top. Alright, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna avoid hurting anyone, because that's gonna be basically impossible. A lot of the time it's gonna <laughs> Rookie please. I'm gonna have to be really careful with my health too. I'm probably going to actually need all the health up potions because I'm probably going to be taking lots of hits trying not to kill people. I wonder how audible the game sound is. I have it set to very low, but it's a fucking loud ass game. See, I need to pull this guy over a little bit. Oh. I wonder if I can kill the skeleton, since he's not really alive. Alright, this is how far I got before my stream, my entire internet crashed. I hate that that occasionally happens, I just want like a good archive. That could happen at a really inconvenient time. Like just now. What the fuck is this guy doing? I deserve that. Good enough? Ooh. This is a little trick on the player. You'll come in maybe with full health, you'll run over, hit the switch, drink the blue potion, lose a health point, and the red potion you didn't drink is back there and you can't go get it. Pretty easy to avoid. It's your first interaction with the blue potion in the game, and if you did lose health, then you've already you probably drank the red potion. So it's actually a very clever little system. It's a great introduction to the blue potion as a mechanic. I never really thought about it from a game design point of view, but it's actually like now that I'm thinking about it, it's kinda cool. There is a tall potion. It's red, so you know it's got to be good. Like the little red potions. It has about the expected result. I think you can go over to that room on the side, too. This is a pretty long level. This game is 12 levels long, and every significant number along the way has um, some kind of neat thing on it. Actually, pretty much every level has some weird kind of significant thing. First level is the first level. Level 2 is probably the most insignificant level in the game. Level 3 has the skeleton. Level 4 has the introduction to the... Um... Well. The castle. And the mirror. Level 5 doesn't really have anything neat. Has the shadow stealing stuff. That's kind of cool. And they reference it in the final level too. The game volume still seems to be loud as fuck on the stream. How is it, Crookie? I'd hate to think the game volume is loud as fuck. Level 3 of my pacifist run. Fortunately, this level has actually no enemies on it. 
making it kind of an oddity. So it will be very easy for my pacifist run. Hey, Zernus. Z. Zemus. And also, thank you. If you jump at, off into the blue here, you can figure out this platform is here by walking down on the bottom floor and seeing how far it goes. I don't know if that's what you're supposed to do, but you can do it. But you can figure out this platform's here, and then there's nothing over here, but you're like, you know, there's nothing thing as a dead end. Ding, ding, ding. There's a quick way through a lot of those things, but I always forget which ones are the ones you can just run through. Alright, I'm going to be really sad if I mess this up. I'm going to have to do a lot of replaying if I mess up either of these jumps. Ah! Not bad. You only get one chance to that jump because of the falling tile. And also because if you do it too early or too late you die. Hello Mr. Skell. Thanks Mr. Skeltal. Thank Mr. Skeltal. You might be able to just run through this one. I'm pleased that that worked. I don't think... well... I don't think you can just run through it on the way back. Hello, door. I don't know how to spare the skelly. I don't think killing the skelly would really matter for a pacifist run. I do know one way to spare the skelly. But I can't avoid killing it on the first encounter. As in dropping it off a cliff. But it doesn't really die. And it can't really die anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Hello, the skelly. Gotta get that early parry. Die, skelly. So the skelly is programmed to step menacingly forward every time you go down here. And there's a little glitch you can exploit with that. See how he steps menacingly forward? Hi, skelly. That'll probably do. He finds you and like tracks you and stuff, but he won't follow you over this cliff. Actually, I think he might follow you and fall down. Alright, this is the first level that's really going to test my ability to be a pacifist. Oh, very hot. Lying down all sexy light. I think there's a specific jump you can get to glitch your way through this door. Pragmag, weren't you at Wednesday Night Fights? I didn't... I don't know if I saw you. I don't know what you look like. I mean, I saw everyone there, I'm pretty sure. Ah... Uh. the Dudley? Was that you? I have to be careful not to A, kill this guy, or B, push him into that thing. That went pretty well. <gasps> no, it didn't. No 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 no! Oh my God, that was close. I ain't the senpai of shit.
I was scared that that would kill me. Alright. I led that guy completely somewhere else. Pacifist run sounds fun. I didn't realize that was you. I didn't know who you were. I didn't know who that guy was. I'm pretty sure you can just run out here. I'm glad I wasn't wrong. Oh no, a mirror! Time to do the only logical thing. Damn, that was weird. Because something weird happened. Change your life to one, but you probably don't have anything left that can kill you in the level by the time that happens. It's kind of clever. I need to make sure I don't kill this guy. I can be saying that about every single person I run into. There we go. That was what intended. That is the way that you're supposed to get through there. You're supposed to jump through that mirror. That's the only way to beat the level, actually. This little area to the right is completely optional, but it's kind of amazing. It's kind of an amazing area. This locks off your path. Two very close together blade traps. And then two buttons that both open the same door. I'm going to take the far one. And then before you can get up to the potion, no matter how you do it, the shadow comes out and drinks the potion, and then he just kind of leaves, and he's gone from the next map. And the shadow has a health bar there, and it's the same color as the prince's health bar, red. Every other every other enemy has like a different color health bar, based on their clothing. Uh, and his health goes from 3 to 4. Pacifist! If you're wounded right here, you can grab this health potion, but actually, if you're super wounded, you can go further down and there's another health potion. Kind of neat. A lot of little secrets like that. I won't be pointing out the vast majority of health potions, but if you need one, there's usually one somewhere around. Good enough. We're doing pretty good for our pacifist run. It would be much harder to do a pacifist run of Prince of Persia 2. In fact, I think it would be impossible. There are some rooms that you basically can't progress through without the, uh, without killing the floating heads. Maybe if you could lead them off the stage, they despawn. There's a lot, of, it would be really hard to do, uh, it would take a lot of planning to do a pacifist run of the sequel. I'm not actually sure if you can do a pacifist run of this level at all. This is the sixth level of the game, and thus the halfway point. And the introduction, this level's really short, it's just the sub-boss of the game. The second hardest enemy in the game, if you will. It's that guy. Man Mountain. Um, good enough. Actually, he's quite easy to bypass. He's quite a hard enemy, though. There's the shadow. Note his presence right in front of that switch. Note this button. Rather menacingly placed over there, in my opinion. Whoop. Thanks, asshole. You begin level 7 by falling. If you don't hold shift there, you actually just fall and die. Oh god, I don't want to kill this guy. This is going to be a hard guy to not kill. Oh, fuck. I fucked me up pretty good. Pretty sure you can just run straight through here. Well, that was close. Uh, not doing so hot for my health. 
That's a start. There's two ways through this next area, or rather there's two ways to get the health upgrade coming up. Actually both. This level is full of options, full of choices. I'll try and do the more... Um, that's bad. You have extra time to go through a gate that's just opening up compared to a gate that's already been open a while. Because the gate doesn't, the timer doesn't start going down until... Okay, it didn't matter at all. Give myself a little bit of extra space. The prince can do a running jump after exactly three tiles. So you can use that to help you space yourself out. If I don't miss this, you cannot surprise this guy. He will always turn this way when when you touch that tile. That went remarkably well. That's the last enemy in the level, so... I'm pretty sure either by falling or lowering yourself you can run straight through here. But I did one of them recently and I was wrong and I died and it kind of sucks dying this far in the level. So, you know. So instead he wins the race. But, uh, I'm too careful with those things. It really sucks to hit that closed gate thing. Because it closes both gates and then that right button opens them again so you basically have to do the whole level again. Um, you can drink this potion, which I just drank. Or you can actually just lower yourself off the edge and you'll take damage, but you won't die. But the potion makes you fall slow, which is kind of fun. This button opens the door, and that button opens the door at the end of the level. It's very intentionally done, like that. And that's so you can opt to take this risk or not. Gotta go fast. Ah! Ah! This is going to be the first level where it's actually going to be hard to be a pacifist. Hey, unlimited. The mouse! No, you can't get crushed by doors in this game, but you can get crushed by doors in the sequel. This guard has a unique AI compared to every other guard in the game. He will not approach you. You can wait as long as you want, he will never ever approach. And then as soon as you get in range, he attacks. So you need to have a unique strategy when fighting him. Um, I just want to get close. There we go. Took a lot of damage there, but you know, I made it. I'm really going to be suffering for health this level, there's a lot of enemies. I don't trust it. Let's go nice and slow. Oh, slow and steady. Punishes for Akuma's far hard kick. I presume you're a character who crouches it since it's otherwise safe. In that case, it's quite easy to punish. And good work. Also, Hayuma. What is good? I'm doing a pacifist run of this game. That guard is going to be exceedingly hard to not kill. I've got to push the button, go through the blade trap, not kill him, and jump over that pressure plate on the side. This is going to be probably the hardest level in my stupid playthrough. This card will be quite easy to not kill. Took two damage quite easy. I don't have that kind of health to spare. I've still got two guards to bypass. I've never ever done a pacifist run of this game, it's kind of fun. That guard is going to be slightly harder, but still quite easy. Um, this requires a running jump and an edge grab. This is the absolute farthest distance you can jump across. And this is the absolute farthest distance you can come ac jump across with a standing jump. Here is a secret in case you need health, which I do. I get to show off all the cool potion locations because I need them. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna lead this I'm gonna lead this guard away. I'm gonna try and creep in as slow as possible. Uh, come this way. 
Alright, he's coming. He's still alive. Still alive. Got one health. Oh god, he's following me. Oh god. Run, 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 Prince. There's two health items in here if you like climb up. No, 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 no. Alright, cool, I made it. Um, a running jump. Oh wait, hold on, I think there's health here too. I think. Yeah, look at that. Alright, here comes the real challenge of the level. This is going to be a nightmare. <sighs> I need to not crush him by that thing. I need to not die. <gasps> I did it. First try. Very quickly. Alright, let's not piss away my achievements by dying to either of these. Yeah, I think about game design a lot. Usually fighting games. These are very deliberately placed to make you go very slow so that door has time to close. The door has time to close so that you can get the mouse. Oh no, I lost. Oh no. Bump. The mouse! He's here to save me. If you just, like, let that door close again, you're stuck, you're trapped, you can't beat the level. The mouse will only save you one time. Thanks, the mouse. Alright, this passive run is going swell. work mouse. The mouse is actually in the sequel too. Only as a cameo I suppose. It's in cutscenes. Alright, level 8. This is the last dungeon level in the game. That's not true. I didn't remember if you could make it through that. There are a lot of enemies in this level. Which means a lot of enemies I'll need to bypass. You might be able to just run through that. You generally can. The prince runs pretty fast. Alright, it's fine. Doing pretty well. If you go back down there, if you go down instead of up, it leads you back to the start of the level. There's an exceedingly hard person to not kill here. I'm going to have a hard time not killing him. Like, this is actually going to be really hard. Um, I'll do. Yeah, I'm not really sure how I'm going to do this. I'm going to have to take the bottom path back, which I've never really done before. So I don't know how to do it. Um, gotta go fast. Alright, cool. That went impeccably. Alright, Prince. Wow, oh, that was scary. If you forget to open that door, it kind of sucks, because you can't make tiles drop from afar in this game. That's not until the sequel. Thank you, Shrek. Also, hi. This tile is a little buggy. I think if you just turn and jump, you'll be fine. But, like, if you get closer to the edge and jump, you'll, like, fall off. It's weird. Um, here's a guy who's kind of hard to... No, he'll be easy to uh, bypass. I usually try and push him down that hole. But today I'm feeling kind. I could get that. I don't think I'll need it. I definitely won't need it. Um, let's get a little further to the right, just for safety. I don't think that gate can close. I made the jump. There's a green potion. 
The only, it's one of three green potions in the game. The first one made you fall slow. Green potion? Green doesn't mean anything. It just means weird. It means unusual effect. This one is kind of cool, so I always grab it. Just because it's neat. I think you can climb up here, can't you? Or one screen over, I think. Whoa. The controls are still the same. It's just the screen that's wonky. There's a health upgrade. Which unfortunately does not cure anything. No, you can't go up on this screen either. There is another green mm. potion. By this point, the player is probably thinking, gee, I sure hope that corrects the problem. And it does. You don't need to drink either green potion, and actually before I've drank one green potion then gone to beat the level. Which is difficult, but not that difficult. I think they redesigned this in one of the ports of the game. A little room down here that's a bit weird. No, it's still the same here. Uh, very unusual little room. Bunch of unnecessary buttons. Here's the final blade trap of the level. These things are instant kills, so I do always get a little nervous when I see one. I haven't actually been killed by one in a while, except for extremely reckless jumps. I've got a lot of health to waste, so I'm just going to kind of bypass this guy. Might as well give him a cut to remember me by. Imagine that guy killed me. I'm just going to fall off the ledge here. Alright! Level, what? 9 completed? Level 10 is going to be the actual nightmare. There's one particular guard who's going to be almost impossible to spare. Actually, several. Level 10 is really short, so like, even though it's probably going to take more than one try, but that's not too bad because of how like small the level is. I'm trying to think of all the guards in level 11 and how they might be problems. Good enough. Um, there's a glitch here that I could potentially exploit, but I'm not going to. It's very difficult to... If this guy knocks you off, it's very difficult to actually do anything. Cannot hit him because guards die if, after falling two spaces, whereas the prince dies after falling three spaces. Guards die more easily. Alright, this is where shit's about to turn real. It's this room right here. This is the second to last guard I have to interact with. Alright, run, 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 Prince. Get your sword out. That was weird. Alright, get past him. Run away. Run away, run away, run away, run away, run away. That'll do. Run, rinse, run. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh. oh, we did it. I'm almost disappointed with how easily this is going. I wanted it to be really hard. There is one NPC I cannot avoid killing. Okay. And it's the last boss. So there's only level 11's enemies left. And then level 12 has no enemies except the last boss. So... I'm nearly done with the pacifist part of my run. It's been kind of cool, actually. I might like play like this more often. Fuck muck. Muck a shit. I've also grabbed every single life upgrade except the one that you literally can't get. I'm holding all this shit up. 
Magic? Maybe they're attached to the back wall. This is a weird little glitchy jump. You'll automatically, like, trip when trying to grab it. And if you jump from any further away, you won't get it at all. Whoop. Alright, you can actually go over this guard, and um, he doesn't die. This guard does not die if you drop. Like, the whole seal. I'll show it off. The whole ceiling is tile, and normally when you drop a tile on a guard's head, he dies. But while you're on this map dropping tiles, the guard isn't, like, loaded. So you can run all the way across, and then, like, come back to this map, and the guard is still alive. But just for added challenge, you know, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna actually bypass him. Good enough. Oh, you know what? You have to go to the top floor. I forgot about that. This is not... Um... Bypassable. It's okay though, I've already bypassed the guard, which is the thing I want to bypass. You have to drop all these tiles. There's a really cool bug here, but I forget what it is. But like, it lets you just run across that hole. Like, you can just like get all the way to the side of the button and then just do a running jump and it works. Or something. Alright, this guard is going to be somewhat hard to bypass. In fact, quite, quite, very difficult to by bypass. On my way. Ah, dead. Very difficult to bypass. I'm gonna parry him and then try and... Parry guards tend to kind of freak out when you parry them. They kind of don't do anything for a while if you parry and then don't repost. I'll do this the fast way and then show off that the guard is still alive. No, I'm surprised that's the first time I've had to replay like a level. You die in one hit if you don't have your if you put your sword away and then Did I just Did I just miss the health upgrade? Fuck that, I want it. I didn't realize that you could do that. I drank the health upgrade and then hit myself out of the animation. That was kinda funny, I guess. I was in uh, Exotech stream today, he was playing Third Strike. I haven't seen that game played in a while. What is holding up those tiles? That guard is going to be really hard to bypass. It might not be possible. I'm going to show off that this guard does not in fact die. Maybe cheese like this. That was bad. Well, the point is he's still alive, right? Alright, we're back at this guy. Let's call this guy the final boss of the game. Make sure he doesn't step on one of those tiles. Get get past me. I need to push him more. Ah, oh. damn it! I think I had a chance there. I believe it to be possible. I just gotta be really careful with my spacing. There are some ranges where I can't. Can't hit him or he'll die. And I have to bait him backwards when he gets to those locations. I could pause buffer it, honestly. Pause buffering is insanely cheap in this game. So every time you hit escape, it pauses the game. And every time you hit escape again, it advances the game one frame. And then if you're holding... No, I don't think you can hold buttons while hitting escape. But you can do it to do some semi-frame perfect stuff. Kind of like Ocarina of Time, I suppose. This does not kill the guard. I'm glad that I can make multiple attempts at this rather quickly. Because I do have a timer, and I have only 28 minutes left in my original hour. Alright, final boss. Okay. 
No, 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 no. Ah. Oh. Maybe if I just hit him and then turn. That might do it. I don't even really need that health potion. Mm. I think I'm just going to skip it. YOLO! Good enough. Time is more important to me than health. I don't even need health that badly. I've got like enough health potions to last me the game. Alright, let's do this. This is the run. I don't know how close. I have to be pretty far from the edge because I need to do a running jump off of it. Alright, let me through. Um, he's gonna kill me. Uh. It's not far enough! Good lord, this is gonna be difficult. It might not be possible. I don't know if it's possible. It could easily not be. Impeccably done, in my opinion. You don't have to be exactly three tiles away. You can get, like, a little bit of a running start. There's no way to, like, reel a guard, and that's... If I push that guy off either side, he dies. So there's just, like... Yeah, this game does have really good animation. There's actually another game called, um... Nostratu, I think? That uses a very similar engine. Maybe made by the same people. <gasps> Fuck! He slipped. Whoa, why'd I go here? That's like several maps over. That's like five or six. Maps to the right. I forgot that the guard I'm... The final boss is not actually, like... The... the the last guard in this level. He's just the hardest to bypass. That was dumb. Damn, dime with the compliments. This game is actually very good. It's old, though. It's fantastic when you consider how old it is. Nowadays, it's only okay. Someone get me a year on Prince Persia DOS. Someone tell me when it was made. Alright, new strat. I bump him, and then I back up a space. No, 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 no. <gasps> I did it! Wow, that's. I've never done that before like that. I did it! Alright, I have to take great care not to kill this guy. And I also have to take great care that he doesn't kill me, which can happen. Ooh. Nineteen eighty-nine. That was the last guard. So the pacifist run, as far as I'm concerned, is complete, provided I can beat the game in the remaining 25 minutes or so. This is the final level. There is a glitch to get up much faster, but I don't know how to do it. I just know that it exists. Okay, I'm pretty sure there's like a bypass here that I never knew of before. I puzzled for a really long time on how to get through this. This is actually kind of funny. Um... Here's me, right, on the fucking side. You can't see my mouse. Um, if you run full speed over that spike pit, you die. And if you try and, like... If you're not running over those, like, plates, you die. Because they fall too fast. You can't just, like, step over them. And I, like, puzzled for a really long time. Because you can't jump over the spike pit. Because you'll land on the plates and then fall before you can recover from the landing. And I, like, couldn't figure out how to get past it. But what you just have to do is stand in the spikes and then start running while you're inside them. Which is really simple. Anyway, I always, like, went straight here, but I think you can actually just climb here, which, like, I never thought to do before, <laughs> but it skips two jumps, which is kind of funny. 
Whoa. R.I.P. that guy. He made it so far. How do you get to level 12 and then die? This is, I think, the first checkpoint of the level. I think there are... Um, there's a lot. I think there are four checkpoints. No, three checkpoints in this level. This level is not even that long. It sure is full of checkpoints. This map shows you a sword up there, which is kind of interesting. Keep it in mind. Yeah, he tried so hard and got so far, but in the end it didn't even matter. That path to the left doesn't even go anywhere. Just goes to a giant chasm. A game ending at a tower level always gets me kind of hype. Hey, remember that sword from earlier? It's gone. Hey, remember that um, health bar? Me neither. Two breakable tiles. The shadow! Every time you hit him, you both take damage. If he dies, you die. In a true pacifist run, you just have to put your sword away. And then you touch him. And then the two of you fuse. Kind of cool in my opinion. It's weird and tricky and unexpected, but you, there's a checkpoint immediately before the fight starts, so you get a lot of tries. And you know, you don't have that many options to go through. So even though it's the first enemy you have to put your sword away against, um, you'll figure it out on your own. And then you just kind of get to a dead end here, like a great chasm, and again, you just got a checkpoint, so like, um, you're kind of willing to take some risks. And nothing tells you to do this, but you can just run across here. It's kind of weird. You can't do that. The reason that it does that at all is you have to get the... Sh it's a check for the shadow. That bridge doesn't appear until you combine with the shadow. Here are the only true RNG of the game. These tiles fall in a random order. You can't just sprint through these passageways. But I chose to wait and let them fall, which is kind of the more safe option. I've got 20 minutes left to beat the game. Uh, the first area with falling tiles is actually the final checkpoint of the level. And right over here is the game's final boss, who is the only guy I can't avoid killing. I seem to recall him having more than f six health. He might have more health depending on your health. He is quite a skilled sword man. He's very aggressive with his steps, and he uh, has a lot of health and good parries. Oh, I won. Time no longer goes down in this room. You can still make it appear, but it no longer goes down. Or maybe it does go down, but nothing happens if it finishes going down. I forget. This is run through hallways to the room. Like, level 13, if you will. Hey! My princess. Der Moose. Tyrant Jafar lies dead, his power shattered. Now at the land, the people of Persia hail their princess and the brave youth who saved her from the forces of darkness. No longer a stranger, he shall from this day forth be known as Prince Persia. That was fun. I'm like really happy that I just did that. I'm happy with all, how that all turned out.